So I've laid out all my materials. Um, we have the body. And here are the arms and legs and everything else. And of course the head. I have gathered some tools, um, a head puller, um, elastic in the left hand corner, down left hand corner, some heavy duty elastic at 16 millimeter uh, industrial elastic with a plastic outside. So I'm laying it out. This is going to be the girl. I'm stringing, stringing here the girl. Um, my table is a little on the small side, so I have to make room for everything. I usually start with the legs, um, because it gives me a chance to see how strong the elastic is, and I will be able, better able to judge the length I need for the arms. So I'm laying it out. The, um, I printed the doll in two colors because the gray, as nice as it is, uh, was more expensive and also it was the last of the batch and it would be a while before there's new coming. So all the green parts um, I printed so, and they would be covered up by clothing anyway, so it wasn't a biggie. Of course there was no skin color uh, filament available and gray was the best color you can have um, all the other colors are bright toy colors uh, or black or white and white doesn't photograph very well and black doesn't photograph very well or it becomes very shiny so I'm trying out here which size which side um, of the upper mobility legs is the, is the right one so this is the one I had laid out. Uh, that's the wrong one I'm trying here. As you can see, it's, it's not fitting right well, and this one's fitting much better. Um, I've already established that the, these things belong together. And the same thing I have to do for the knees, because they are s different from side to side and can be accidentally put upside down. So I have to be sure I got the right one. And again, for the lower legs, you don't want to mess them up because um, the doll will not be able to stand if you mess it up. It's always more tricky. Feet. I'm laying it out as it's going to be as um, as I'm facing the doll, so. The left leg on the right on my right and the right leg on my left. And there we have it. The elastic, like I said, it's 16 millimeter uh, thickness. There was only one color available, black. Um, but since the doll, the doll is grey, it's not that much of a biggie. Um, this is not, uh, this one has a plastic jacket instead of a, a proper uh, cotton uh, jacket, so I need to uh, sear the ends with, some fl with a flame, otherwise they're going to unravel. So I'm making a guess on um, the length that I'm going to need. I actually overestimated it, you will see that later, uh, but it's better to have too much than too little. And when I strung the second doll, I had too little and I had to do a little bit of um, MacGyvering to uh, give it a little bit of extra <laughs> uh, elastic. This elastic is, it is stretchy, but not, um, not as stretchy as you the most, yeah, see it's stretchy but um, strong. So cutting it and, and searing off the ends.
Yeah, my matches are not the best in the world. I have to buy a different type next time. You don't want to actually burn the, the end. You just want to have it above the flame. So the plastic melts and, and becomes a little bit of a clump instead of unraveling. It sticks to itself and and, um, and now it won't unravel. No. Careful, it's hot. So I'm not using any ho uh, any S hooks here for two reasons. One, I'm not that fond of them, and two, I couldn't actually find any in the right size. If you get one in the right size, it's too, too stiff to bend, and um, it won't fit. And if it's uh, if it's big enough to fit um, the the foot, it's it's too big to fit the leg, so it doesn't work. So you string straight through. Yeah, always double check that you have it the right side up or you're gonna have to unstring it later on and redo it. Uh, you may want to do it the other way around. <laughs> Okay, a leg. For some reason the foot always goes the other way. A leg, there you go. So, you know, whoop, there my, my camera went. <laughs> That's gonna happen a couple of times, sorry about that. So, now it's time to go take it through the pelvic parts. You can actually uh, make the knot already if you want. I just didn't do it here. Um, I don't always do everything in the same order. I'm gonna try and go all the way through. It's just to see the um, stretch of the elastic. Um, this is always the point where you have to try that out with the first leg. And that's why I want to usually go all the way through if I can. See, I have enough, that's good. Um, I'm thinking what to do next. Yeah, I'm gonna tie it off and see if see if I have um, if I can make it tight this way. Yeah, I was worried that um, the edge of my uh, chest of uh, the neck is going to uh, be okay with a thin ring like that. Again, I had the problem of not finding an S-hook in the right uh, size or even a ring in the right size. So this is um, this is an overgrown keychain uh, ring. Um, so it's going to have to be a little bit of winging on how I'm going to do this. Yeah, um, I stick. Uh, I try to stick something like like that pin knot that I have there through um, a knitting needle. A thick knitting needle will also do something that isn't made um, of metal uh, and is not uh, too thin. Again, again, I don't want to damage the top of my neck. Okay, next leg. Same thing again. It 
don't forget to sear off the end of the um, the bit that you're not going to be using at this point because you will be using it next time and it will fray in the meantime so sear off both ends both ends of a cut always And it's still hot. Yeah, I cut enough. I probably cut too much. But it's better to have too much than too little at this point. Yeah, checking which way is up. And the doll, of course, is completely my design and I made... Um, it's one of my earlier ones. It's not the most brilliant in the leg department, but I did make them um, mobility thighs. Um, my, they're a lot of work to make, so not my favorite to make, but um, they are good for having, and they're also good for when a doll is cast. And this one is not going to get cast, it's too big. But her, the original, which is three times smaller, um, Maybe, who knows, but probably with different legs. I'm gonna improve on the legs. So this, I'm doing this differently. I'm making the knot first and then so it's easier to, uh, to pull it through. I'm gonna use a puller in a second and pull it through. I have a bunch of pullers. Um, I have the head puller that's uh, in the top of the shot. Um, that's for short distances, but f this is gonna be longer. And this is my medium puller, it's my favorite. But it's going to be too short for this, so I want to go be able to go all the way through and forget that. So it's my big puller, um, and now a matter of getting it down. This. Um, Puller I made of flexible um, wire from the DIY store. Um, the medium puller is actually a, uh, I believe, a four millimeter, no, three millimeter um, knitting needle that I've bent. And the head puller is again a piece from the, a hook from the DIY store with an extra long uh, end and, uh, and, a, and a dowel that I, I, I screwed it into. Okay, this is a bit annoying. <laughs> ah, there we are. So now I can actually, there's a hook at the end where I'm holding my hands. <coughs> and I can actually um, hook the elastic onto that. And see that I've taken the knot away a little bit from the top. So we don't have the knot at the top. This is where I want to be in the end. Um, the other leg will need to get readjusted. And here we go. Oh, you can see I can pull it way too easily. That um, elastic is not way not tight enough. So we have two legs, that's just showing off the mobility thigh, it also makes her sit a little better. There we go.
Uh, my camera angle is not good. And my camera is going to fall down real soon. So I still have that knot at the top. Um, it's time to um, see if I can do something about it. It's just... Uh, it's way too much room to pull easily pull stuff. So I'm pulling on one end to move the knot down into the body. And there you go. Right. Let's start with the arms. So, same thing with the le as I did with the legs, I lay them out. So, is that the right one? Yeah, it actually was. Oh. And that automatically means that the other ones are the other side. For the elbow peanuts it doesn't matter because they're extremely the same. Oops, I didn't quite clean that up from being printed. As you can actually see in some of the pieces, uh, every piece has been printed in two parts because um, the printer pro requires a flat part to um, start the print on so you can see it in the peanuts that I've printed a um, back part in green and a front part in the gray it was just for fun so making a rough estimate of how long it should be and then we go back to cutting again Now, since this is one piece for both arms, I'm going to do this a little differently. Uh, just checking that it actually can fit through easily. That's going to make life easier knowing that. So that fit here is quite tight, that's why I'm twisting the elastic and this one will go through with the other one that's going to cause me a, few pro a little bit more problems <coughs> and there it is so I'm having the elastic at unequal ends here because I'm going to knot from the side so it's going to be the arm, this arm first. I 
Again, the peanut it doesn't matter. This peanut is uh, equal on, in every in every direction. Of course, if you have like an arm that is a little bit more tight than this one, you can use a puller to pull stuff through. And now you have an arm. So now I'm gonna do. Um, I usually, um, ah, of course I've got to put some stuff. I'll be right back. You always forget something. Um, on the table I put out a knife and a, t a tape and um, so I usually use a hemostat for this but since this material is so thick six, six millimeters and um, the hemostat would break so um, I'm using this as a hemostat with the elastic uh, the idea is that simply the end doesn't come undone when I start pulling on it and um, threading it through the, the doll and adding the other arm which is what's going to happen here Okay, a little check that the arm is actually the right arm and not <laughs> the left one. Here, hand, hand correct, yep, hand correct. Now you're stringing it in a different way. We're going by uh, one, uh, one thread instead of two threads at the same time. Let's put some light on the matter. go and then we get to the hand and this one is gonna not be able to twist through I it's very tight and since my pliers are now busy be, pl pretending to be a hemostat I have to use my hemostat to be pliers that works too just take it with the hemostat and pull through See, you only need one hemostat set and one pliers. Okay, there we go. And now we have to go back through. Yep, and now we come and we put it through the torso. It probably wasn't ne necessary to pl apply it the other end off um, because I actually had enough material, but having the pliers there to make sure it doesn't s slip through was is, is very happy making. It, it makes everything easier. Right, now we can make a knot. So at this point you want to pull, start pulling the thing, everything tight. It's just a matter of, yeah, pulling a loop through and then threading it through uh, all the way down to the hand and then because the hand is so tight on the on the elastic uh, it needs a little help yeah you can see pull 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 and that's where the camera went down but I picked it up again pull nice and tight as tight as you can So, if I'm doing a small doll, I would do a hemostat thing here again. 
um, but even for my pliers, this elastic is pretty thick. Yeah, it can be tighter than that. Should be tighter than that. As a start, it's not bad. Okay, though this is... Um, where I would add the ring. Now I'm giving it a little bit more tightness. Okay. Pull, pull, pull. It depends on the elastic, um, whether or not it needs this, or whether it, the first time is correct. Um, usually I don't tighten the arms as strongly as I do the legs, because well, they don't, the doll doesn't have to stand up on, the, on, her, on her arms, so... Um, and if you make the arms too tight, it starts to whack you in the face um, when you move it. Um, but it's too, too... Too loose, and the arms will always fall down and lose their pose. Um, it's, it's sort of a tight... Um, a tight choice. So I, I moved up the knot a bit, so I have to cut the... Elastic again. And I'm readjusting the um, where the elastic goes through the hand because it's um, it's very tight and it doesn't flow very nicely, nor does it need to. So I have now four ends to uh, to finish off. I will do all four for the simple reason that. Um, even those little bits of elastic, especially the thicker elastic, usually turn out to be very useful. So I keep them um, and I uh, I did end up using a bit of this uh, elastic le that's left over um, in the next project. Oops, I try not to weld the, loose, the, the, the match to the, to the, to the plastic. Again, you don't have to hold it in the flame. It shouldn't smoke or, or burn or anything like that. Just enough that it melts the plastic. And the plastic will shrink on its own and stop so it doesn't unravel. Uh, okay, now. Uh, I hope you can see this. I'm going to stretch this a little bit and so the knot can go inside at all. There we go. Now you can tighten this again by pulling up a, a one or both of these elastics that are, that are now in the torso and put it through the uh, neck hole. I haven't, I will not be doing this on this doll because the neck is not the, as strong as a regular resin neck. Oops! Oh yes, I um, decided to readjust the length of the, of the legs. This is not unusual. At least I had to move uh, one knot uh, away from the neck, and I think I decide here that it really is um, too loose in the legs. So I'm gonna give it another pull, and I'm gonna make another knot for about another seven centimeters down on the line, maybe even ten. I'm not gonna cut off these ends because they're gonna be all inside the the body anyway. So, check so that it's sort of the same. So you see, it, it's not exactly the same. It doesn't really need to be exactly the same. Um, So, we do this part again. Um, you missed it, but um, I pulled it through. This time I made sure the knots are actually inside the body. And now I'm gonna pull, use a real puller to get it all the way up to the head. Now it's actually 
uh, strong enough. There's tension while it's in this is stage, and once I pull it through the neck, there will be real tension on it. Now, I can actually use this one, my favorite. And I'm gonna do it both at the same time, which should be quite a pull. It should be some serious tension on here. If I can easily pull it, it's not right. This is the one that I made from a knitting needle. Okay, I have both on them. Now, here the pulling starts. I'm just trying out how much, how hard I need to pull. Yeah. And there we go. Pull, pull. So I have the tension on my hand and then it's pull, pull out the, the wood, so the, uh, the dowel, so I can put it back in here. Yeah, um, if this was a resin doll, you may want it even tighter than this, but I think this is about all the um, the, tor the chest part can take because it's a single walled chest part, it's not solid like the rest. So now we put on the, the ring. I'm looking for something to hold the ring open while I try to fiddle it on there. And there you go, just like with a key. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this type of ring on uh, resin dolls because they will, it, it, because it's so narrow, it will cut into the resin. And um, this was sort of a um, uh, make best of it moment for this doll, and I was worried it would, was going to do the same with this material, but it's, it held up. It held up. It didn't have to be very like this very long because there's the head. And I've could it put it on there and it has a proper place where where this um, ring will full sits. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, there you go. It's sitting uh, almost in place. <laughs> and there we are. Sorry, my angle of my machine is not so good, so um, the camera's about to drop. There we are. Hello, sweethearts.